presentation is over child abuse. And the problem is there's more kids than we know of that are being abused because they're afraid to say something to someone or they don't trust anyone and or they're too little to understand what's happening. And some data is 86% of the people who abuse children are male and 37% of American children are re reported to protective services by their 18th birthday, which is a pretty decent amount of people. And what the kids need is someone to listen to. They just need someone that, that they want um, you just gotta let them know that you're listening to what they say and like that you care what they say so they can trust you. And you can, if they need a trusted, like someone who can go get them help, they can just talk to you through it and then, yeah. And if you build up a relationship with these kids that need it, throughout time, they will be able to trust you and tell you more things about them. And my solution is a place for kids to go that are being abused to talk to like older teenagers that have already been through it. And if they just talk to them instead of just like report it right away, it could be better for them in the long run. Instead of just like going to the police or something, you can just go and talk. Or you can call and just talk if you don't want to show up there and just talk through it. And that's basically it. I just thought it's like people don't talk about it a lot, so I thought about what getting into it and seeing what's happening. So it sounds like you realize there wasn't a whole lot of awareness about yeah. it, and you wanted to raise the awareness. And um, I like, I really like your idea of having um, a place for kids to go yeah. to be able to talk about, you know, things that they might have been through, especially with other kids who might have been through something yeah. similar. So helping give them some support. Um, just a real logistical, legal kind of thing when you're creating a situation like that. This is just for my professional background. Um, if an abusive situation happens, the state of Indiana, every single adult is a mandated reporter. Um, and so I think you've kind of got a little loophole where you're saying like kids will talk to other kids, but they don't have to report it to the police. But I just want yeah. everyone to know that that's actually like part of the deal. Like if you find out about someone getting hurt, it's, you're kind of obligated to make sure that yeah. that person's safe. Um, so I think that would be a little bit tough to create that environment and kind of get around that, skirt that legal issue technically, but I think it's a really nice idea to provide support to those kids. So my question for you would be, um, given that there's some trust issues there already, like you identified, how would you make sure that someone who is accessing that service could remain anonymous? Like, are you talking about from the kids' side or mm -hmm. the... Right, because um, like if you go to the counselor's office now, everyone that probably knows. Yeah. Right? So what does that look like? Um, probably, I would say, like, just like... You probably just need to, like, if they want to stay anonymous, I would say just call instead of go into the actual place. And then I guess the, the other piece of that, first of all, good you know, presentation, Thank obviously, you. right? I mean, it was well-researched and, yeah. you, you know, I, I guess, you know, identified the problem and I was curious with the same thing, right? I mean, why why this topic, you know, for you personally? Um, but again, on the, the mentors, right? So the teenagers that, that are now maybe the, the ones they meet with, or, you yeah. know, if they're not teenagers, maybe it's, you know, younger adults in the you know, late teens, early 20s. I mean, I guess how do you 
I mean, is there any model out there where, I mean, they've already identified themselves? I mean, certainly you might have, you know, a handful of young leaders that are out there being advocates because they went through it, but you also acknowledge this is something that they're probably, you know, pushing under a rug and trying to just move past. And so, you know, there, there's more people out there capable of doing that coaching, but how do you find them and identify them? Um, I guess, like, find a group of people that have been through that because I looked it up and there's no places like like that around Indiana so like I would guess say just find a group of people that have experienced that and that are willing to talk about it so. <coughs> one suggestion I might make is like creating some sort of um, awareness at like mental health centers where a lot of people who have experienced trauma or abuse specifically might be going and like posting things so then they can kind of voluntarily like see a flyer like hey do you want to join a support group or do you want to be a mentor or do you want to help like I mean that's just one idea so Cam how will it be funded uh, I'm not sure about that yet but you could probably find good volunteers and yeah. you know you would put them through some rigorous training but someone's got to coordinate all that. Yeah. You know, whether you do not-for-profit or for-profit, um, state-funded dollars, national grants. Got some research to do. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and then the for Kim.